Hey guys, a lot of you wanted a tutorial on creating a base mesh and sculpting a dinosaur. So, here you go. First, we're going to delete the... No, just kidding. We're going to add a reference image of our dinosaur. I'm only doing the head in this tutorial, but everything shown here translates to the rest of the body when you're doing your own. Make sure you have the mirror modifier set and tick clipping so you have a nice clean row of vertices down the center. From here, I'm just going to block out the base mesh. I'm not too worried about detail or correct topology at this point since I know it's all going to drastically change down the road. Once I have my sock puppet and remember what it is exactly that I'm doing, I'm going to switch to sculpt mode to begin refining my initial blocking, using my reference image for, well, reference. After I realize I'm adding no detail whatsoever, I'm going to remember to tick Dynamic Topology. This is going to allow me to procedurally sculpt detail into any part of my mesh and it will update the topology accordingly. For the details, I'm using this beautiful piece of concept art as a reference as I sculpt away the eyebrows, beak, and other minute features. After I'm finished sculpting, I'm going to add a cube for the tongue, some spheres for the eyes, whatever the hell these are called, and some smaller cubes for the teeth. Now wait. Before you move on, you're going to want to click this button anytime you're using the subsurface modifier. Instead of having a ghost of vertex past, you'll have a nice smooth boy to edit and it just makes things so much easier and it took me forever to find. So. And at this point, you should have something like this. So, it looks great so far. There's one problem though. The geometry is a little messy, 
It's dense and sporadic, and that can make things a lot harder for us down the road. This will need to be fixed. I'm gonna hop on over to Instant Meshes, a free and open source project by Wenzel Jakob, and open up my sculpt. After admiring its blue, I mean really admiring its blueness, I'm gonna take a look at all the pretty buttons. The main ones you need to pay attention to are target vertex count, orientation field, and position field. Select a vertex count that is low enough to be considered optimized, yet high enough that your model doesn't degrade. Once I'm happy with a number, I'm going to go ahead and hit solve under orientation field. This is going to give me a visual on roughly where the computer thinks the new topology should go. Clicking the comb allows me to manually add my own guides to get more control over where the topology will be laid. Having a general understanding and vision of your end product will save you a lot of guesswork in this step. Next, I'm going to hit solve under position field which will give me a grid showing exactly where the edges and faces will lie in my retopologized model. I'm not super happy with the initial result, so I'm going to go back to the comb under orientation field and redraw guidelines that could render cleaner results. Once that's finished, I'm going to give her the old spin and go down to Export Mesh. After almost clicking Pure Quad Mesh, hit Extract Mesh, and we're now left with our retopologized model. From here, we now have a nice and clean medium poly model that will be much easier to unwrap and shouldn't have any issues handling rigging and animating. Now we're actually going to delete the default view. Bring in your new mesh and, okay, this next part is technically optional if you don't want to add feathers, but this boy do be having them, so I'm going to give it to him. Select all the faces that will be feathered and create two vertex groups. One will be the base skin and one will be the feathers. Assign the selected faces to the feathers. Now this is where the fun begins. Add a particle system and set it to hair. Go down to vertex groups and under density, select feathers and that will assign particles to only the faces in that vertex group. I'm gonna shorten the hair to match my reference as well as set children to interpolated to add some procedural detail. I'm gonna take Sparky here and switch it to particle edit so I can, and I mean this literally, Give this dude a virtual haircut. I shit you not, you have to sit here and barber him as if he was sitting right there in front of you. Once I get him prom ready, I finally have this. A beautiful Therizina sword bust with near perfect topology and a healthy mane. This is part one of a two-part series, and in the next one I'll be going over some texture painting techniques I've picked up as well as some basic rigging and animation. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you made it this far, I'd love to have you around in the future. Peace y'all.